We are now in ordinary time in the church calendar, and what does that mean for us as Catholics? The Christmas season is over. Do we get to take a break now? Well, my friends, we know that is certainly not the case. Ordinary time makes up most of our liturgical year, and it reflects those periods that are not tied directly to the Easter and Christmas seasons, including Advent and Lent. Many important liturgical celebrations occur during ordinary time, including the Trinity, Corpus Christi, All Saints Day, the Assumption of Mary, Christ the King, and numerous feast days for saints. In short, ordinary time celebrates the mystery of Christ in all its aspects. We start that celebration with today's readings, in which we are asked, what are you looking for? As I was preparing for this homily, the unfortunate and sad events in our nation's capital were unfolding. Inwardly, I kept thinking to myself, if Jesus had met them, how would they answer his question? Over the last several months, my brother deacons, priests, and I have all talked about how we as Christians should react to these challenges that are occurring in our society in a loving way that unites instead of divides. And in some ways, the challenges we face today are not unlike those in the time of Jesus. There was political upheaval. There were culture clashes. Diseases such as leprosy were easily transmittable among the population. So I offer to you in all of these things, God is calling each and every one of us. The question is, how will we answer him? In today's gospel, we are given the scene where two followers of John the Baptist follow after Jesus, and he asks them that question, what are you looking for? This question goes much deeper than just the obvious one of looking for the Messiah. It is echoed to all of us through the ages to today, and it speaks to the real meaning of happiness and freedom. The material world can provide many good things for us. However, it cannot provide true happiness, and only God can do that. God calls each of us to his will, and it is through Jesus and only abiding in Jesus can we experience the fulfillment and happiness for which we are all created. So how do we do it? Well, first, we have to open ourselves to God's call. I believe most of us here can identify times in our life when God has called to us. But how many times were we like Samuel and didn't recognize the call? Or maybe we put them off because it would make a change in our comfort zone. And I'd like to share with you all a briefly my own call and journey to the diaconate. I first, I first received my call about 20 years ago during a retreat that was set up here in the parish by a, couple, a priest and a couple of deacons. And as I went through it, I come to understand that, yes, I was getting that call. But I was also working rotating shift work at the time and understood that it was too much of a commitment at that time for myself or my family. Unfortunately, that very justifiable reason would become a crutch for me. And that comes to the second part of this. The second step is acting on God's call. So if you fast forward several years, I still haven't acted on God's call, and it's about 2008, and then my job transfers me to Atlanta. And I stayed there about 18 months. When I joined the new parish, I went right back to my comfort zone and started teaching CCD, as I had been doing for about 10 years. However, I did make some good friendships there, and just before leaving to come back to New Jersey, my friends talked to me and they said, you know, Dave, you've got a lot to share, and it's more than just being a CCD teacher. God is calling you to do more. So upon getting back to Tom's River, I think you guys can guess exactly what I did. I went right back to teaching CCD and put that off. About a year now goes by, and my friend Georgia was talking to me one day. And through the course of the conversation, asked me, had I acted on their call yet? And it was during that and afterwards I came to realize I was procrastinating with God. 
That next Sunday, I made the commitment to myself to step out of my comfort zone. And I met a priest after Mass and talked for a while and about how I could do more in the parish. Out of that discussion grew the Veritas Faith Sharing Group, which 10 years later is still going today. Seeing the positive effects that that group had on our parish gave me the confidence to step outside my comfort zone once more. And I talked to Father Scott about it, and I was fortunate to be selected to the diaconate in that first class over five years ago. You see, God calls each of us in a variety of ways, and sometimes it's not so subtly. However, it takes work on our part to answer God's call in our lives. Just opening our hearts and hearing it is that important first step. But rest assured, the devil will come up and entice us with every reason to delay or ignore it. God will even bring people into our lives to reinforce his call. But it still requires that act of choice on our part. And we have to leave our comfort zones and proceed forward in faith to trust in God's plan and to see where his will will lead each of us in our spiritual journey. And that call may be to the priesthood, the diaconate, religious life, or to just have a greater role in the parish. But the goal for each of us is to allow God to transform us into that mystical body of Christ in our own unique way. So let's spend this year's journey through ordinary time reflecting on the mystery of Christ in our lives. Then answer his question, what are you looking for? By saying yes to and acting on God's will. And together we can change the world for the better and find the true happiness and fulfillment that God desires for each of us.